With the recent weather update, we are introduced to a lot of great weather setters, including the amazing Fog Summon on Tronix. But has it really dethroned Reaper Tronix and being the best ability? This video is going to provide details, examples, and ultimately make the decision on which ability for this Demon of Illumion is the best. Looking at Tronix, it is a light spirit type, meaning it only has one weakness, being metal. These are the stats, making it a strong, bulky attacker. The abilities include Radiance, which sucks, Reaper, and the new Fog Summon, which allows dense fog to be brought to the battlefield. This fog benefits spirit type Lumians by both disabling the abilities of non-spirits and allowing any two turn moves to become one turn if used by a spirit. This is defensively beneficial as many offensive threats lose their abilities and become much easier to deal with. Charonix can often enter the battle and use this to its advantage because it only has one weakness. Even things that are often impossible to switch into, like vigorous Colossotrops, become manageable. Once on the field, Charonix has a wide move pool to choose from, often clicking Flash and Flea, which provides momentum since Charonix is so slow and will usually pivot out last. Other notable moves include its signature move Apparition, now a one turn move which is crucial for hitting popular threats like Lashent. Spite offers early game value by punishing healthier opponents, while Rant provides a ranged attack drop, supporting any setup sweepers that come in after Charonix. Additionally, Luster Loot, despite being a relatively weaker move, proves to be insanely valuable due to Charonix's lack of recovery options especially given its lower base health stat, making the healing even more valuable. This could even be paired with Peace of Mind, transforming Tronix into a nightmare of a setup sweeper, sometimes allowing it to win the battle single-handedly, although Flash and Fling into other abusers often remains the optimal play. These abusers include Vesperatu and Your Soul, who under Fog keep their abilities and have little to no switch-ins. This creates a dangerous combination, as even the best physical walls, like Tundralin and Epsidragon, are left without their abilities and a resilience boost. Fog Summon Charonix also plays a crucial role in dealing with opposing weather teams. Thanks to its low base speed stat, this ensures our weather is set last and overrides the opponents. The only exception right now is the Heatwave Sitter Billaforge, which is one of the least concerning weathers and not a major issue. Even if the opponent does establish the weather though, Charonix can safely switch in against all but one weather abuser, nullifying their preferred weather and ability, turning what was a significant offensive threat into something now completely useless. The only weather that poses a threat to us is opposing fog. In this situation, we avoid bringing our Charonix since it may result in us setting the weather for the opponent and being down an abuser. This way, we also have a chance to be up an abuser if opposing Fog Simmontronix is brought. If not, teams will both have 5 Fog Abusers without Fog, resulting in a balanced match. Aside from that though, the only real negative of Fog Summon is that team building is restricted and we are forced to bring certain abusers. But it's not as negative as you feel being swept by a Reaper Charonix. This ability allows Charonix to heal 25% upon knocking out a Lumion. This not only allows Charonix, who doesn't have reliable recovery, to gain health, but also pressures the opponent, making them play very cautiously, since a comfortable switch into Charonix is always required. Reaper Charonix also becomes significantly more threatening due to its diverse move pool. Magnify serves as a powerful setup option that can usually be clicked due to Charonix's bulk, and one weakness, ensuring Tronix always gets value, and usually a kill. Nova Blast, a strong light stab move, complements well Tronix's high range attack stat, while weaker light move, light speed ray, handles faster, frail opponents aiming to revenge kill Tronix due to its lower speed stat. As for a spirit stab option, Spectral Burst serves as a reliable middle ground that can hit Lumians like Miri. For coverage, Frostbeam targets plant types such as Lashent, while Rant unlocks unwallable, light dark coverage for Tronix, allowing it to hit many of its usual answers, 
aside from to clips, of course. These moves make it very customizable, allowing Tronix to beat any Lumion it desires. Even if the opponent does have a reliable answer though, Reaper Tronix is so powerful that it can force damage on this possible answer, creating opportunities for the rest of the team. This makes pairing Lumions with similar answers to Tronix a great strategy since these common answers are forced to switch into Tronix and let's say Novadias, who both cause Falkyrie to enter who intends to stop these Lumions, but can completely stop both after it is hit by one. And if left unchecked, Tronix can rapidly build momentum, creating a snowball effect as it becomes even more difficult to stop as it accumulates kills. Now let's accumulate the main points and compare Reaper to Fog Summon. Going over the raw use of both abilities, Reaper directly enhances Tronix's survivability, while Fog Summon just helps it safely swap in. Once Fog Summon Tronix is swapped in, it's as if neither side even had their abilities, making it a fair 1v1, which means that Reaper Tronix's raw ability is considered better. Moving on to team versatility, Fog Summon teams are forced to use specific abusers, like Vesperatu, since without them, the potential of Fog isn't maximized, making team building with Fog Summon very restrictive. This is the opposite of team building with Reaper Tronix, as there are no real set teammates, besides for maybe a few, meaning creativity is very flexible, causing the team versatility of Reaper to be much better than Fog Summon. What matters more than the uniqueness and amount of teammates you could have is the quality of them, which Fog Summon shows by allowing broken slapdown users like Vesperatu and Lashent to ignore resilience boosts and basically always get value once they hit the field. Having access to Sharpen and Brawn Boost makes these Lumions even better since this allows them to break through almost any physical wall effectively, opening up paths for the other abusers. Reaper Tronix, on the other hand, utilizes Lumions such as Nova Diaz to its full potential as the only reliable Nova Diaz checks also happen to be Tronix checks, meaning even if the opponent does have one, they can only use it for either one of these Lumions and not both because the check will get chipped down while dealing with one. This in comparison to Fog, however, isn't as powerful due to Fog having a larger variety of abusers and better reliability since Fog can always be played the same, making it much more difficult to make mistakes. Another factor that will help us identify which ability is better is how difficult it actually is to use both of them. Reefer Tronix demands that at least a few game determining predictions are made since any offensive threat in the hands of a less experienced player is not going to be an issue. Whereas with Fog Summon, you can reliably swap in Tronix and most Lumions and guarantee your abusers entry with Flash and Flea, allowing you then to always get value by clicking Slapdown since it always removes an item, and nothing like Resilience or Scorching Skin can punish it. This makes Fog Summon's playstyle very reliable and consistent, especially because it's easier to play. Although it is easier to play, this comes with the downside of Fog Summon being very predictable, which brings us to our next point. If you see an all-Fog team, it is guaranteed that Tronix is Fog Summon, compared to the situation where you don't see an obvious Fog team, it could be either. This is because Fog Summon Tronix could be suspected on any team, as it is not only used with an entire Fog based team, but also seen with Lumions that have bad abilities, but are good and benefit from Fog, or just with a couple potential, but not guaranteed Fog abusers. This benefits Reaper Tronix, because Fog Summon is almost always obvious, while Reaper can sometimes take opponents by surprise. Anything good can be summed up by how successful and consistent it is. Reaper Tronix has been a known offensive threat since its release, while Fog on the other hand... And Roger TNS is going to win Lumion Cup number 10. That's going to be GG's there. Oh, look at that. 3 nothing with Fog. After winning this entire tournament, and proving to be very oppressive, Fog Summon was then banned from future Lumion Cups. Using Fog Summon is a process of rinse and repeat, meaning that every battle will be somewhat similar, and you will end up playing the same game plan for every matchup. Once this is perfected, 
even with the restricted team building and clear predictability, Fog Summon causes such a powerful overcast that it is pretty much unbeatable, making it the winner. Now let's move on to the team building section of the video where we create a team centered around the winner. Starting with Fog Summon Tronix, it's running a bulky set, allowing it to switch in and set the weather as many times as possible. This survivability is boosted by Health Amulet and Luster Loot, which can even be used with peace of mind, turning Tronix into a setup sweeper. Lastly, we of course have its signature move Apparition, now a one turn move thanks to Fog, and Flash and Flea, allowing Tronix to pivot into many Fog abusers, with the main one being Vesperatu. Vesperatu is the best Fog abuser since the combination of Sharp Claws, Dark Essence, and Stab Boost and Slapdown allows it to lash out an equivalent of a 190 base power move if the opponent still has the item. Additionally, Priority Move Shadow Sprint allows Vesperatu to hit any Lumians it doesn't outspeed, as well as sets itself up for late game cleaning paired with Sharp Hit. For a stronger spirit move, it has Harrow, which includes an additional poison chance, meaning walls like Tundralin can sometimes be crippled without even needing fog. Although this next Lumion is also a great fog abuser, but hits Tundralin super effectively. That being your soul, who also benefits from Sharp Claws as well, along with a great offensive and defensive Titan. This Lumion also has access to Slapdown, although it is weaker since it's not a stab move, but it's no concern since the main source of damage comes from Power Cuffs Boosted, Brawler Stab Move Pep Jab, which allows your soul to keep momentum in its favor since it regains energy as it deals damage. Your soul also has the same potential of hitting fast Lumions and breaking through walls with Sharpen and Shadow Sprint. This makes your soul a powerful abuser alongside Vesperatu, although they are both weak to light which Miraith, the fourth Lumion resolves with its reflective ability while also helping support our wind conditions by setting up barbs with Shatter. Miraith's natural range bulk allows it to enter the field as many times as possible against threats like Stratosaur Soul Burst and Falkyrie, forcing switches and giving opportunity for barbs to be set, or a pivot with Fade Away, keeping momentum. We have both metal stabs since Miraith's offensive stats are equal and it allows us to hit Lumions for their weaker defensive stat, while Energy Orb also helps since Murith will be on the field very often, but rarely in a position to get its energy back. The immunity light types have to fade away isn't an issue as well, since our strong metal moves hit these light types super effectively, such as our next member, Hollow Bunch. Hollow Bunch's great defensive profile, paired with the fact that it doesn't lose its ability under fog, makes it a crucial Lumion for this team. Hollow Bunch helps handle physical walls with ease, while also switching in on stuff like Zula. It is sometimes even used as a mid-ground against threatening Slapdown users like Vesperatu, thanks to our held item, Shade Pearl, and it can even keep itself healthy with Life Drain. We are maximizing our bulk, since energy investment isn't worth the valuable TPs, since Hollow Bunch's main job is to force out threatening attackers, but at the same time, it could even be used to launch out strong, Peace of Mind boosted Nova Blasts. And the plant types, which handle both the stab options Hollow Bunch has, are dealt with Pharaoh Blasts. For example, Lashent, our next team member. Lashent, with access to Gloomy, on top of currently being considered one of the best Lumis in the game, makes it a perfect fit for the team, having another light immunity to protect our abusers. With its insane coverage and extensive move pool, it might be tough figuring out the four moves to use. Our first move supports our physical abusers, being Blossom Shell Boosted Timber Thrash, which nukes walls like Gargolem Defense that can consistently swap in on both our abusers and chip them down with Empathize. This might seem counterintuitive, as our set includes heavy investment in both our defenses and nothing in attack, but this is because Lashent already benefits offensively by its extensive coverage and boost from its ability, so we prioritize getting entry with this Lumion, as it is very important. Slapdown, Ice Hammer, and Earthquake, alongside Timber Thrash, provide pretty much unanswerable coverage, allowing us to become a middle ground for basically anything we may struggle with. This, however, doesn't solve the main issue the team currently has, being opposing hazards, which is why we have our last member, Krakaloa. Krakaloa is here so we can remove hazards with Burnup and answer Lumians that currently sweep us offensively, like Hunter 
and opposing Vesperatu, which makes sense given the stats. We also have Mysterious Dust, making Krakaloa even more difficult to break since it can't get poisoned and even has access to Rejuvenate. For the remaining moves, we have Magma Burst included with that absolutely fire 30% burn chance that may punish any physical attackers we are afraid of, and Mud Spatter, which is used for other fires and includes a nice speed drop. As mentioned before, we also have Burn Up that allows Krakaloa to both remove hazards that may get set and even break through walls like Obsidragon and Venelin in a 1v1, completing this team based around Fog Summon Choronix. This brings us to the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this new style of video, as it was a lot of fun making, and I'm hoping to possibly turn this into a regular series. Also, let me know your thoughts on my decision of Fog Summon being the winner, and why you may agree or disagree with it. Until then, I hope you enjoyed the rest of your night, but don't get too lured in by how amazing Tronix is, since just as the dex entry states, anyone who follows the light too closely is never seen again. And I want to see you guys in the next comparison.